Uh, hi everyone, um, this is Maggie Marr, Promotions and Marketing Coordinator for CCE Yates County, and I am here at the Cuca Lake State Park boat launch uh, to get an inside look at, the, at one of our watercraft stewards, hopefully doing an inspection. Would you like to introduce yourselves please to our audience? the watercraft steward program on Cuca Lake. Um, so we're here today at Cuca Lake State Park um, with our steward Bill Simmons who covers um, the state park on a regular basis and uh, I'll let Bill talk a little bit more about uh, what the responsibilities and role of um, the steward is um, but overall the program is um, to help prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. Uh, so it's funded through DEC um, there's several watercraft steward programs uh, across the state um, to help prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species um, all over New York State. So I will let Bill talk to you a little bit more about uh, what he does when uh, watercraft shows up. Um, yeah, when somebody comes down to the boat launch, I just introduce myself and tell them that uh, we're just collecting data and informing people about the importance of preventing the spread of invasive species and I ask them if they've been in the water in the last two weeks and to figure out where they're coming from and uh, if there may be anything alive on their boat mm -hmm. and I ask them what measures they take to prevent the spread of invasive species and uh, if they uh, allow me to do a quick inspection and I look down around the boat and the trailer and see if I can find any plants or anything. And if I can identify it, I'll talk to them about it. Yeah, so one of the primary ways that all invasive species spread and aquatic invasive species as well is through uh, human movement. Mm -hmm. So when, say for example, somebody may have been at Cayuga Lake uh, prior to coming to Cuca Lake, there are invasives in Cayuga Lake that are not present in Cuca and vice versa. So in Cayuga Lake, um, there is an invasive species known as hydrilla, which is not present in Cuca Lake. So if a boat were to show up and have a piece of hydrilla attached to it, um, then that's a potential pathway of spread um, for it to become established and invasive in Cuca Lake. And then, you know, in Cuca Lake, mm -hmm. um, we have our stonewort, which is an invasive species that is not present in all of our finger lakes. So it's not only important for us to make sure that a boat's not entering Cuca Lake with an invasive species, but it's important to make sure that a boat isn't leaving Cuca Lake with an invasive species that's not in one of our other lakes and um, spreading it to that lake. So it's important. Bill will do an inspection of the boats on their way into the lake and also on their way out of the mm -hmm. lake so that we prevent the spread both directions. So how has this been going in this particular, in the uh, time of social distancing? Um, yeah, Phil and I were just talking about that <laughs> earlier, so I'll let him fill you in on kind of the activity at the launch this season. Uh, the guy with the, uh, with the park has told me that they check their numbers and they're uh, an average about 30% more boat traffic than mm -hmm. last year. And the one weekend he told me they had 60% more boat traffic than the previous year. Hmm. Yes, I think a lot of people, you know, coming to the park and being mm -hmm. outdoors is really kind of uh, an activity that we've all found mm -hmm. know, that we can do safely. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a, a relaxing activity too. So a lot of people are coming to the mm -hmm. lake. Um, to, to head out on the boat for an afternoon. So, yep, a lot more traffic this year. We've had trouble with the, the iPad, the battery keeping up on the iPad <laughs> that we use to record the, the data. So, yeah, a couple things we've had to, had to work on this year in, in response. At first, you know, when we started the season off earlier in March, April, planning for the season, we were worried that we you know, wouldn't have anybody visiting the launches at all. And it uh, turned out to be quite different, so. Well, that is really, that is, all things considered, that is fantastic news uh, to hear. Um, but it just makes the importance of our, our message and, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that people, because a lot of people, you know, they, it's not that people 
wouldn't or don't want to clean their boat or prevent the you know spread of invasive species but that education component mm -hmm. is so important um because people don't realize that they might be carrying mm -hmm. you know, something attached to their boat and uh, it has the potential of spreading to the mm -hmm. public so making sure that we have the watercraft stewards here not only to do the inspections but to educate people about the importance of doing it mm -hmm. themselves because you know we can't have watercraft stewards here 24 7 so um reminding people that it's just you know something that they need to do on their own because yeah especially if because every the information just seems to change like so like almost every day you never it's hard I can imagine for some it would be hard to keep up so it's really great that there's programs like this around to help people people stay informed and just be, still have fun but be safe about it yep. have vegetation I see. Yeah, it looks like he pulled out pretty much all of the same species this time. Sometimes you get a variety, sometimes you just get all of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And yep, this right here is a, is a type of pondweed. Um, I don't think that it's an invasive. There are invasive pondweeds, um, but I think this is one of our natives. Um, one of the most common uh, invasive pondweeds that we encounter at the launches is curly leaf pondweed. Mm -hmm. And as its name suggests, the leaves are, are you know, a lot curlier than this. These aren't curly at all. Um, the other ones you would notice really, they almost look like kind of lasagna noodles, the way that the edges mm -hmm. curl on them. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so this was your second throw. So yep. do you, are you, would you be able to identify just what you think you picked up the second go around? So this is eelgrass, these here, and those are native species. Mm -hmm. And you see this one has a zebra mussel growing on it. That it does, oh my. And this is Elodea, mm -hmm. that's a native species. And this is Eurasian water milfoil. That's invasive. Yeah, we do have some native milfoils around, um, but the best way to, and the native milfoils look very similar to the Eurasian water mm -hmm. milfoil, um, except that the stem on the Eurasian water milfoil is red. On our native milfoils, the stem um, is green. Huh. And the leaves on the Eurasian water milfoil has more 11 or more leaflets on each leaf mm -hmm. and the native one has less. This is some slender naiad. That's native. Not sure what this is. And sometimes you get something that's not an aquatic uh, plant at all. This right here is a seed from a sycamore tree oh. which is one of our you know tree species that usually grow around the lake is they really like the, huh. the wetter, rockier soils. But yep, sometimes you pull up something that is not oh. an aquatic plant at all. <laughs> but 
But the important thing is it's not an invasive either. So right. <laughs> that's that's also good. Definitely, because yes, you know some some you know plant seeds depend on water mm -hmm. to uh, spread as well. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Found a piece of basil on a boat last week. <laughs> <laughs> that's. Did you talk about this one? Well, oh, that's something. Um, <laughs> well, I identified it. Yep. So um, Phil told you guys that this one was Allogia, mm -hmm. and um, I mentioned earlier when we were talking about the watercraft steward program how in Cayuga Lake they have hydrilla. Mm -hmm. So this is probably one of our closest native lookalikes to hydrilla. Um, but there'll, there'll be some distinct features that are, are really hard to, to tell sometimes with the, the naked eye. But mm -hmm. as you can see on the Elodia here, there are, when you look at how, see the leaves are whirled around the stem. Mm -hmm. They kind of whirl around in a circle there. Um, so with our, um, with the Elodia, it is, see how there's only three leaves per mm -hmm. whirl there. Oh, wow. With hydrilla, it's usually closer to about five. I think sometimes they might even get up to seven, but usually mm -hmm. if you're gonna, if you see more than than three or four whirls there, mm -hmm. um, then you might want to look it up a little bit more to make sure that it's not hydrilla. Um, and also too, if you put it under um, like a little magnifying lens mm -hmm. on the hydrilla, you'll see that the edges of those little leaves have uh, like sharp teeth on them, mm -hmm. whereas the leaves on this are fairly smooth. Oh wow. So how many times do you do, when you're uh, at the boat launch, how many times do you throw the rake into the water? Um, with the uh, aquatic macrophyte survey, they have, it do a, have us do it every two weeks. Okay. And we do the um, uh, macrophyte survey in partnership with uh, Finger Lakes PRISM. So oh. Finger Lakes PRISM, PRISM stands for the Partnership for Regional mm -hmm. Invasive Species. Uh, management, so it's kind of a collaborative effort um, run through the Finger Lakes Prism. Mm -hmm. If that gives enough time where maybe you'll be get a different species that they cycle through their growth stages. Yep. Yep, and then with the Prism being regional, mm -hmm. it can kind of, you know, it helps us to better understand too and detect like all of a sudden something shows up in Cuba Lake that we've never detected mm -hmm. before that helps us, you know, to, you know, let other other mm -hmm. lakes be on the lookout, let our watercraft stewards know, hey, this has been detected in the region, keep an mm -hmm. eye out for this on any boats, um, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it really helps, you know, um, for us to just share the information regionally, mm -hmm. which is really important, because we've got people, you know, traveling from the launches from lake to lake across mm -hmm. the region. Oh. Phil's just going to go around. He's going to check the common areas where mm -hmm. vegetation usually get attached to uh, trailers or boats themselves. Mm -hmm. So he's checking everywhere in there. A bunch of great places for vegetation to get attached. Mm -hmm. He's going to walk around, check the wheel wells, check the lights, and uh, you know, he gets down and he looks underneath because a lot of the times vegetation gets attached to the under parts of the trailer. Mm -hmm. And then he also checked. Um, Checked all around here. We get a lot of vegetation attached around here, even the license plates. And as you can see, this boat is pretty clear of vegetation, so they are good to go. Wonderful. Yes, thank you guys. Okay, so what can you tell me about this? receptacle that we are standing in front of and next to? Yeah, so I'll let Phil talk to you about that. Um, this way, Phil. Um, this is a bin where you can put your any things that you get on your boat or your trailer and it'll dry out and die. Mm -hmm. So they have these at a lot of boat launches. 
Yep, so it's important to, you know, when a boat comes in and has vegetation attached to it or when a boat, you know, is leaving the water, when they stop and they do their inspection, they, you know, check their boat, their trailer um, for any attached vegetation. If they find some and remove it, um, we ask that they please, you know, put it in, in the disposal mm -hmm. um, bin right here because we don't want it to end up back in the water. If, mm -mm. if it were an invasive species and it washes, you know, back into the water, um, then it still has the potential to establish itself in the lake. So we want it to go here where it's not going to wash back down into the lake and uh, it'll just sit here and uh, decompose in this spot. And um, is there, let's say someone finds something, like an invasive on their boat that they are unfamiliar with, is there, uh, who, if they would like to speak with someone to help them identify it, is there, who would they contact? Yeah, well, if, you know, a watercraft spirit isn't present at the site, I mean, you know, if they, if they find it and, you know, Bill's here or if one of the other watercraft stewards is uh, at one of the other sites on the lake, mm -hmm. um, you know, they can gladly talk to the watercraft steward. Mm -hmm. um, but if nobody's here, um, they can reach out to myself. Um, so they can call at the office, mm -hmm. uh, Yates County, um, Cornell Cooperative Extension, and office number is 315-536-5123. So you can call there and uh, chat with me, send me some pictures of what you found, and uh, we can work on identifying it. All right. And uh, just to note to our viewers out there, uh, our office is, is in fact open by appointment only as of today's date, which is August 10th. But again, just call us at 315-536-5123 and we will get you taken care of.